Hey everybody, it's me, Kyle, and our next guest needs no introduction. The legend herself, Nina, the most famous Danish Vietnamese girl in the world. Is that a true statement? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, I'm, I'm telling know. you, actually, you know, a lot of people, I know for a fact, a lot of people didn't know anything about Denmark if it wasn't for you. And that speaks for my behalf as well, because prior to knowing you, I knew absolutely nothing about Denmark besides Hamlet. So I think a lot of my viewers throughout the years, they were introduced to Denmark through you. Through you. Really? Well, through you. Well, through me, through well, you. Through, yes. Well, through you. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's get to know Nina today a little bit uh, better because we practically don't know her because most of the time when she's on camera, I'm the one doing the talking and I don't let her talk. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. That's not true. Nina's shy. So how do you know me, Nina? Let's let's take let's take everyone back. Yeah. How how do well, you, how, how do we off, get connected? Let's talk about uh, the elephant in the room, because I haven't seen you for a year. Mm -hmm. What happened to your look? <laughs> what do you mean, my look? What's with the hat? What's with the hair? Um, quarter life crisis, new style. Um, <laughs> somebody gave me a bunch of their um, clothes. Um, yeah, you know, boredom, loneliness. I don't know. Co COVID. I don't know. Lockdown. Why? Do, I mean, do you, what, what do you think about it? I mean, you can be honest. I mean, I know I've been reading the comments and everyone's like, oh, I think it's refreshing. Seagulls. I think it's okay. refreshing. No, I like it. Yeah. You know, I just uh, you just have to adapt. You know, during COVID, I can't get haircuts as frequent as, as I liked to before. Before I had to get like weekly haircuts to maintain that that line. Uh, I mean, you know, um, and uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to, you know. I don't know. I just I. I just started feeling old and I thought that I was like, I was freaking out because I thought that I was losing my hair or something. So I would see like a couple of strands of hair in the shower and I'd freak out and be like, you know what? I'm not cutting my hair short anymore. I'm just going to let it grow long in case I will lose it eventually. Mm. So let me just enjoy, you know, the probably one of the only good things about me is my hair. And uh, but I am graying fairly quickly. So the next time you see me, I'll probably have a lot more gray hair. It's it's a genetic thing. All my cousins have early onset uh, gray right. hair. So yeah. I'm glad you I'm glad you enjoyed the look. Yeah. But I think I don't think I've changed that much. I mean, it's just more of the Justin Bieber thing, you know. Uh, it's just and, longer. It's just longer and, in the, the front hat. and, I mean, and just yeah yeah m more different hats than the the usual baseball cap hat, you know. But that's just yeah. I, I think it's a good improvement because the baseball cap thing, it's good for certain things like, you know, going out exploring in the sun or whatever, right? It's not fashionable. It, it's 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 hard to match with a lot of things. You know, so right. I'm just trying to... I mean, I, I like it. I like the Bruno Mars look. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it's much easier to think about fashion when you're staying in one place. When you're living out of a suitcase, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. Okay. Also, well, you guys have great weather. That's I mean, compared true. to Vietnam, where you know, it's just freaking you know, hot. Ye yesterday, it was like 80 degrees, which is like, I don't know what, like 20. That's like 26 degrees over here. Bright and right, sunny. That's perfect. I, I, I mean, I mean, it's sunny. It's sunny right now, you know. Yeah. So Southern California, I mean, the weather, you know, but we'll get to that. We'll get to everything. Don't worry. Okay. Now let's focus on you. you no, know, let's, let's enough Sorry. about me. This is uh, what I do. Yeah, that's okay. This that's is okay. why we always talk about you. Okay, how we met, how we met. We, I think I saw you on, uh, I think I actually stumbled across your blog first. And then I just came back from a trip in Vietnam where uh, I went with, I went with my mom in 2011. And then I came back and realized that I didn't know anything about Vietnam. I mean, only only stuff my parents told me. It's dangerous. It's uh, people uh, people aren't uh, honest. They're going to steal. Don't hold your phone uh, in public, stuff like that. And then when I was there, I just didn't really experience that. 
which is, I thought it was pretty cool. But you know how it is, like, going to Vietnam with your parents, they're just really overprotective and just very, with my mom at least, she's very, uh, she just stays at home. Uh, if I asked her to go anywhere, she would say, yeah, let's wait for uh, your aunt. When she gets home, she can take us. And so coming back to Denmark, I just felt like I missed out on something because I didn't feel like I got the, like, the full experience of being in Vietnam. And I have been in Vietnam before, but um, that was when I was five. So I just came back and, as an adult and, and realized I didn't know anything about it. And so I had pretty much like an identity crisis, came back and didn't feel like I could uh, relate to any of my Danish friends or I could, but there, it was like, there's something missing and I don't know how to explain it. And so I just Googled um, VietQ, something like VietQ, Vietnamese identity crisis or something like that. And then I stumbled up, uh, across your blog, which was like, what was the name of it? Like So journaling Vietnam. So journal. So journaling Vietnam. Yeah. Yep. That was Sojourn before the Kylie dot Well Kylie exactly. dot was like Kylie dot net was always a part of it. So journaling Vietnam was the name of the blog and a series of yeah. travel vlogs, right? So journ yeah. journ yeah, yeah. It it, it, it grew to Kylie dot net more so, yeah. But Kylie dot net was a URL. Right. Right. And then I think I read a few of your uh, blog entries and then I I kind of felt like you knew Vietnam a lot more than me and I just kind of saw like I just kind of thought okay this guy could be my tour guide so I did I wrote you and I said hey can you be my tour guide and you're like yeah sure because that was back when I think you probably had like under 1,000 subscribers and when I watched your videos it was just old boy and John and I don't remember much else because I didn't I mean, I didn't watch your videos that much. I was more into the reading and stuff. Right, right. Uh, um, I was fairly new to Vietnam during that time, and I was kind of uh, I didn't I didn't have a following. I don't think I had a following, and so you were one right. of the first few people to actually reach out to me. Uh, I think yeah. what it was was you actually commented on my blog. Mhm. Mm because I remember the exact uh, avatar that you use as well, which is like a picture of you I looking do too. up. Yeah, I I definitely remember that. Yeah. And but and, beyond that, I don't sorry. remember much else. But uh, when did you come back to Vietnam, and when did we meet uh, after the first contact? So I came back in uh, 2012. No, 13 maybe. I think 13, right? Yeah, because I moved over there. Yeah, July 13th. of 2011. Exactly. So I discovered it like pretty much right after. And then, uh, yeah, so I came, I came back uh, the summer of 13 with Seb and my parents. And then we met up. Yeah, you came to our house. No, wait, did I go to your house first? Yeah, you, you and Seb met me in Fumi Hung first. That's right. And, yeah, and yeah. At, and at this time, we didn't really like keep in contact. We just kind of on and off, you know, like a message here and there every few months right and then when you came again i didn't know anything about denmark and i remember that you said that i was speaking too fast yeah and so i yeah I really i didn't do any well english research. is my I, third language right and so i had so, no idea what was going on i've never met any danish people right i just saw you guys as like just foreigners like westerners or americans even like i didn't it didn't didn't connect right and so you were there uh and then I actually got a chance to meet your parents and heard their story and, and all that. So how did your parents end up going to Denmark? Uh, long story short, uh, my dad fled, uh, I think five, no, uh, six or seven times. And then I believe it's the seventh time it, uh, he succeeded and ended up um, getting picked up by an Indonesian ship. And went to the island, Kalang, uh, where we went. And that was just him. And then he, they found out that he had a brother in, in Denmark. He was picked up by a Danish uh, ship called Mask, um, which is a big shipping company. And then 
when they found out he had a brother in Denmark, they they just he just automatically ended up in Denmark. He wanted to go to the U.S. or Australia or a country you know of, uh, so he didn't know anything about about Denmark. And he he's actually not even friends with his uh, brother because he's that's a long story, but he's like the older brother, and my dad is uh, the second youngest one and also the most rebellious one, which is why my grandmother wanted him out. So he was like the only one who she actually paid to get rid of him uh, because she wanted to keep the other ones. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and, and then my mom, my mom just came over after. Um, right. And your parents were already in a relationship before this. Right. Right. Cause they lived actually in Vietnam and their houses are still on that street right across each other. My dad's house is on the main street and then my mom's house is in the ham. Yes. Um, in a deeper alley, but pretty much in the same street. And so my mom uh, would sell cigarettes out on the main street, and my dad would start smoking <laughs> to talk to her. And uh, yeah, so they already knew each other before that. I mean, he still smokes to this very day. So does he blame her for actually? For he just stopped like a year ago. Oh. Yeah. Okay. He quit smoking. I'm very proud. Okay. Um, yeah. That's good. That's that's awesome. Um, so, your father eventually sponsored your mother to go to Denmark, and that's where you and your brother were, was born. Now, tell me yeah. about that. Tell me about Vietnamese people in Denmark, and when you grew, were you growing up? Did you have any Vietnamese friends, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, well, I can't tell you that much because I'm, I wasn't a part of it. Uh, we grew up in a in a really small town. Um, it's like known as the, it's, I mean, it's, it's harsh to say, but it's known like a trashy city. The Ranas. Where, um, Ranas. Yeah, yeah. It's not known for anything except that. Um, I mean, it's not that and, trashy to me. I mean, when I went there, I couldn't tell like I think what's we wrong with it. Yeah. Well, because it's perspective, it's perspective, right? Like <laughs> it doesn't I, look trashy and no, it's, it's not nice everyone beautiful. is trashy at all. Yeah, it's just that reputation. The reputation, I understand. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a hillbilly type of a thing, like a redneck exactly. town, right? Okay. Exactly. Um, so, so we came to actually we came to Horsens first, uh, which is another small city, even smaller. And um, my uncle opened um, like a fast food sausage van. Yeah, Pulsevon. Um, Pulsevon in Ranas, and so my dad being mm. his brother, had to move with him to help him out with his business. And that's why we moved to, to Ranas. But my, my brother's actually born in Horsens, and then they moved, and I was born in Ranas. And so, yeah, that's why we moved there. And I think we're actually, um, my uncle and my dad, our families, we were the only Vietnamese Danish family at that time in Ranas. So I didn't know anyone. I, I grew up with my cousins they're two uh boys and my brother and that's it so i didn't know anyone and we didn't like we didn't really have any vietnamese friends my parents are my mom is a buddhist my dad is an atheist so we don't have that we don't have that same community uh as you guys do in the u.s or they have in berlin or germany um so we just kind of were alone in in Rannes and my parents had to make Danish friends um, so they were really I mean it's been good and it's been bad in some ways because my Vietnamese is really bad um, I didn't I didn't grow up with I mean I grew up with Vietnamese culture but it's just we didn't um, I only saw it from my parents and they I think they they kind of like like my mom said like born you and they actually like didn't do that much um, or teach us that much. Or when we spoke Vietnamese, they were like, it's good. It's, I mean, it's understandable, but they didn't correct us. Yeah, because we... there was no need for it. I mean, I'm... No need for it. I mean, they understood, so... Yeah, exactly. I'm the same way. Like, for me, for many words, my parents never corrected me. You know, exactly. like... You know, like... Like uh, butterfly. <laughs> like butterfly, yeah. Yeah. Right? It's boom, boom. You know, before yeah. I was like, bomb, bomb. You know, exactly. or cheese even right I, I, it's pho mai i call it ko mai my entire life until <laughs> i moved to vietnam ko mai, exactly ko mai. 
yeah it's shocking when i found out right even my own last name my parents never corrected me even lay i went by lee for all those years until yeah the ninth grade when i went to vietnam and when the immigrations officer read my name gi lay lay mm. huh <laughs> lay and that's when i found out even my What dad he even goes by mr lee to this very day so exactly. it wasn't it wasn't a demand it wasn't a need for it but i think though your vietnamese is still much better than many vietnamese american children kids our age because they even though they're surrounded by vietnamese in little saigon the resentment for example or the lack of interest it's all about your willingness and your motivation to learn it and you you've mm. spent a lot of time in vietnam way more than the typical Vietnamese American your age. Yeah, I know a lot about Denmark, uh, you know, yeah, like even right now. Yeah, geography is great. Even right now, if I close my eyes, I can visualize exactly uh downtown or the center of town uh yeah, who centrum, you know. Yeah, easily like leaving the train station and you know, going to uh my last um uh the last place I ate there, uh the sushi table thing. Yeah, no, I I know it. I mean, all yeah. the centrum is 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 easy, you know, and And even to your house, I can imagine walking there. Like I, I know the path. You know, it's yeah. That's why I well, like it so much. Well, last time I think you actually, yeah, you came by yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah, last yeah. time. Yeah, I yeah. mean the the past few times that I've been to Denmark, you guys haven't picked me up. Like I I know exactly where to go. Like you know, in the beginning, yeah. the first time I was there, everyone was there picking me up. There was like a banner, a sign. Second time, I think it was only <laughs> Seb, and then the third time, it was just like, okay, I'm on my own. <laughs> I know. Yep. And last yep. time I didn't even drive you to the airport. Right, right, Remember? right. Remember, right. like you were yeah, like, yeah. wait a minute, you got a driver's license. <laughs> right, right. No, no, no. That's okay. No, no. I, uh, you know, the convenient thing is that there are buses that take me directly to either airports. It's uh, almost easier to take public transportation sometimes. It is easier. Because you don't have to worry about the parking because the parking the in parking, Denmark sucks. Parking and then you have to drive back. Well, I mean, it's the parking is not that bad, Nita. Come on, it's. <laughs> wait till you go to. Parking is bad in the city. What, Oh, no, right, right, oh, okay. right. Wait, no, I, I thought. I oh, I thought you meant the airport. Ever. Well, I thought you right. meant to the airport, but yes, no, yes, no, yes. No, Ahu Centrum is Ahu Centrum is terrible. The the terrible. airport airport parking for for either airports in Bulu no, yeah, yeah. is is right. simple. Is a cinch compared to LAX parking. Please, like, if you okay, how do you know if somebody really cares about you? Is if they're willing to pick you up from LAX. That's true <laughs> love right there, because that place. I mean, not now, but. In busy times, is a nightmare to just even drive through to drop somebody off. So, do you think that growing up in Denmark shaped you who you are today? Yandalone? Yeah. Are you a very sure. Yandalone person? What is Yandalone, by the way? I mean, I already know, but I'm going to ask you because. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's very like it's a very Danish uh, way of living. It's like um, unofficial rules, where. Uh, Don't think too high of yourself. Don't uh, think you're better than anyone else. Um, stay humble. I mean, it's very, um, it's just very like mind your own business. Uh, it's a very like I don't know like it's a very Danish way of thinking. I think. And it's taught People in school, right? Don't brag here. They don't. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely, um, definitely had an impact on me growing up in Denmark because I do feel like sometimes when we just talk I feel like wow the U.S. is so different like in so many ways um it's not just Denmark I think it's a European thing because I definitely feel the same when I talk to um like being uh who's from Germany I feel like we have similar um we had like, like similar like a view of the world and stuff like that similar um opinions and values and stuff like that um yeah i can't say that i know that for sure uh because yante's law is that so is yante's law something that's taught in school no 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 it's just like not even spoken about it's just something you know about so parents just try to teach it to the kids no it's not even like no one even talks about it it's just everyone knows what it is because it just defines the people Right, but you have it's pretty to... much a definition of Danish, but they don't even teach anyone about it. I'll give you an example. In Denmark, if let's say you told me this a long time ago, if let's say you have a family of four and you like the husband and the wife drives big SUVs and stuff like that, gas guzzlers, that 
isn't a cool thing. Like in America, it's a normal thing, and maybe yeah. it's a trend. It's a you know fashion statement, but over there, it's like nah. I mean, you should have a small car that you know is just the right size for your family, electric exactly. preferably. Yeah, not too bad for the environment. Like we don't. Yeah, exactly. And like it's almost looked down upon if you have a car. If you're just one person and you have a car and you don't even have to commute to work or you live like five minutes from your work, it's kind of like looked down upon. Like it's unnecessary. Uh, I think it's not everyone. I mean, definitely not everyone is like this. But in the bigger cities, I think that's how a lot of people think.、Uh, it's different in Lanus. It's not like that. It's a lot more materialistic. What did you do after high school? I took、uh, as many gap years as I could. I didn't know what I wanted to study, so I just—it's very common, actually. I remember us talking about this before.、Uh, it's super common to take a gap year or three、uh, in Denmark.、Uh, it's actually encouraged by almost everyone. Like all the adults, or like the parents and teachers, they really encourage you to just go do whatever, go travel the world, work,、uh, go out and work, and then just mature, and then go back and. And get your education because it's either way. Like education is free, so it's just like it's there when you come back. You don't have to like time something. We're、yeah. very privileged,、mm. so we can do whatever.、Um, so I just took a gap year and I worked. I actually worked at a, a Burger King and I worked at、um, an elderly home, and I worked、uh, at different restaurants.、Um, worked at a supermarket at once too. Yeah, I mean, I've always had like a, a gap year job or a study job、uh, while studying, and that's actually one of the years. Like then I came back and I studied.、Uh, I worked and then I I went to Vietnam a couple of times, went back and studied、um, marketing management, and then I、uh, took a gap year more, and that's when I lived in Vietnam in two thousand and fourteen to fifteen, and that's when. We were neighbors. How did you meet Seb, by the way?、Mm, we met in. He went to a different high school.、Uh, he went to a sports high school because he was playing basketball. And I just, I think it was my senior year of high school. I、uh, started hanging out with、um, other people at that high school, like、um, other people on his、uh, basketball team, because my best friend. Uh, who's from Croatia? She was friends with one guy from that team, and that one guy was Sebastian's best friend. So、mm. our best friends were friends, and we just met through、um, like games and parties and stuff like that. Uh, uh, I see. I see. Was, yeah.、Uh, so we didn't. Was this the? Is this the same Croatian girl in Copenhagen? Yeah. Ah.、Uh, okay. Sandina. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay.、Right. So through her. Wow. Wow, what was it about Vietnam that made you want to keep coming back? Because a lot of Vietnamese Americans, not just girls but boys, they don't like Vietnam that much. They go once or twice, and they want to go to other places. They want to travel to、right. other, like Thailand or Indonesia. Like the thought of going to Vietnam every year, or even the thought of living there for X amount of time. I think you guys were over there for like. Over half a year or something like that, right?、Mm. Um, the thought of it scares them. They wouldn't even do it. So, why do you enjoy going back to Vietnam so much?、Um, I did at first. I mean, the first year I was there, I I kind of felt like out of place. I feel like a lot of Vietnamese Viet Kiosk have that experience where they think, "Oh, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna look like everyone else. I'm gonna fit right in," and I didn't. I had like a terrible experience. Like I just felt like everyone was looking at me.、Um, people were even speaking English to me, and just like would come up and touch my nose, and yeah, super awkward.、Um, my my mom would would actually not go anywhere with me because she felt like everyone was staring at us. So she was very embarrassed. Like she was just super like, oh, I don't want to go anywhere with you anymore.、Um, so I didn't. And my and my and my family, they didn't understand my Danish Vietnamese, which I thought I mean, be, like prior to coming, I thought I was okay. I mean, I can talk, 
but they didn't understand me, and I didn't realize how Danish my accent was. So the first time I was there um, wasn't a success. Then the second time when I when I came in in thirteen, that was a year after I came with my mom because uh, my grandpa was actually dying; he had cancer. So we just came back to say goodbye, and so. Uh, that was actually a, a better experience because we, like, my cousins were more open. Um, like, they talked more to me because the first time I came back, they were very, like, I felt some sort of resentment because I was the one who got, like, my dad. Because uh, my dad is pretty nice and their dad, their dads are, like, one is, um, one owes a lot of people money and he's just, like, somewhere, we don't know where. He just fled from the whole neighborhood. And then another one is a drug dealer. Um, so, I mean, they were pretty resent, like, yeah, I mean, I don't think they hated me, but they didn't like me. There was like um, a barrier. There was like a wall in there between was a, you, right? Exactly. Yeah, and my language of, was really bad. Yeah, language, well, so it was probably talk. a, it was probably a background thing too, you know? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like there with my iPhone, huh? Like, right, right, right. <laughs> didn't right. understand like, yeah, the culture. Right. I mean, and then, and I was 18. I mean, I was really not that old. I was really young. Right, um, or maybe they were intimidated by your eyebrows during that time, because I remember you had uh, very yeah. razor thin eyebrows. That was like that the uh, 2007 eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I the grew Rana it up now, look. though. I mean, it's yeah. better now, but it really didn't have a lot of hair yeah. ever. Like the not Rana's even as a child. Look, yes, I remember you had yeah. one line as for eyebrows. Yes, the Rana's look. Yes, I recognize I it to this very day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. I'm not embarrassed about it. I feel. I've... Okay, so then <laughs> after that. Um, yeah, so when I came back with my mom, a lot better. It was a lot better. And then I came back to Denmark feeling like I hadn't, like, I like I needed more. I, I needed to explore more because we were only in Saigon and we went to, I think, uh, Muine and somewhere else. And then I saw your uh, blog and realized there's so much more to explore. And, like, I feel like this is the same feeling I've had every time I return to Denmark afterwards. I feel like, but there's more. And I need to explore more. And it's it's like very like uh, um, unachievable thing to see it all. I mean, I I know you feel like you've seen it all, but I feel like Vietnam is always growing and always like it's changing every freaking year. I come back, I can't even like navigate because everything is new. This is new. Uh, that's a new shop. That's a new restaurant. Um, so I don't feel like like I don't feel. Um, I don't feel like I've I've seen it all or experienced everything. And well, the more yeah. I go to Vietnam, the the better my language becomes and I feel like a more like there's a side of me that that is like there were some puzzles missing and I find those puzzles when I go back. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. If that I, makes sense. I, yeah, yeah, I I agree. I feel that way as well. And and the thought for me though and wanting to go out there and see more of Vietnam is just a thought that I'm able to do something that my parents will never be able to do. And I'm proud to make right. the effort knowing that I've seen more in this country where my parents were born and raised than they ever will. And mm. just the thought of like following in the footsteps of my ancestors and, and all that, you know, that's why whenever I go visit family, uh, especially like the, the village and stuff like that, it makes me feel like hmm, this could have been me. I could have been here easily. And yeah. I enjoy those moments a lot. And also just the exploratory aspects, right? I like going to places where few people have been. And mm. yes, I've seen a lot of Vietnam, but haven't seen it in a while. So I would love to go back. And for me, though, it's more important with the right kind of people and who you go with and, and all that, too. For so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and, and I feel like, do you... Uh, so my dream is, you know, in a similar situation as you, I would love to share Vietnam with my significant other. Now, do you think you and Seb got closer because of Vietnam? Because you gave him this gift that, I mean, without you, you know, he'd be a different person, I think. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I think for sure, for sure. Um, he He's like the most open-minded person already, but... It's just hard to like. It's hard to only just explain your culture and explain uh, the food. You have to really go. You have to go and see it with your own eyes. You have to like sit in my grandma's house. You have to sit there. You have to use her toilet. You have to eat her food. Uh, it makes all the difference for sure. I'm actually like even like last month I visited um, Claggy 
in Hawsons and his uh, his girlfriend. And I think it's the first time we actually talked because we've like we've met before uh, with you, but we didn't talk a lot. Um, I don't even know why, but we, I guess we didn't have the chance to. And so now we like just sat down and talked and got to know each other. And he's like, he just like multiple times during that evening, he's like, Seb, I can't believe you're so Vietnamese. <laughs> like you're so like your way of thinking, the way you understand us and, and our uh, problems and issues and everything. Like you're so Vietnamese. It's amazing because like even my uh, Claggy's um, girlfriend, she asked me like, so, so when you grew up dating and stuff, did you date only Danish guys or were there any Vietnamese guys? I'm like, my, there wasn't, I mean, there wasn't any Vietnamese guys. Like it wasn't even in my, like, I couldn't even, there weren't anyone that would be my brother. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, he's like super Vietnamese, um, in a lot of ways. I mean, I think you, you, even you would agree with that. Yeah, I remember. You've very, met so many. Yeah, I've met so many foreigners and 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 and, that, and all that. But Seb is definitely one of the ones who embraced the the Vietnamese culture to the fullest. I mean, there's many times I still remember that he would go to my uncle's house and mm. drink with my uncle, right, all right on the ground, and he'd yeah. eat everything and just the 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 willingness to just try new things and to actually enjoy it. Uh, definitely. I think one of the best times I've ever had was when you guys visit, visited my grandfather and visited my, my family, you know, all the food. And it's just, this is something yeah. I never had in America because I never right. had friends over with my family in America. Never. I never introduced anybody to my, my parents really in America. Mm. Well, more recently, yes, but not when I was growing up. Uh, right. And so that to me was a very special moment where my friends from all over the world got to interact with my cousins. And at first I was a little bit kind of apprehensive about it because I wasn't sure what you guys would think. But I know that I brought you over because I know that you guys don't judge that much. Uh, so it wasn't a big deal. But of course, you know, if somebody who is just brand new to Vietnam who doesn't know, you know, they might have a difficult time, you know, sitting while eating yeah. on the ground or you know not having toilet paper or etc cetera, etc cetera, right so i knew you guys already had that kind of background and the experience and more importantly the willingness to accept it as a temporary thing and that's why i really respect seb for uh for that so what is it really like traveling with me and you can be honest <laughs> oh my god how where do i start you gotta ask me some questions i mean is it annoying to have the camera all the time Honestly, it's not because, um, honestly, like I'm really speaking from my heart. It's not because I got so used to it that I don't even notice when you film us, which is why like some of the comments sometimes are like really harsh. Like, how come your friends don't talk or, uh, it would be better if your friends would um, participate or something. But I don't think people realize that like when we travel, for instance, with, um, summer of uh, 16 when we went to bali singapore uh central vietnam all of that that summer was when you you were doing daily vlogging mm -hmm. and yes, that yes, was yeah. crazy like you would film we would i mean we would have our schedule um we would have like full schedule for traveling every day and then like we would go maybe like six and sometimes six in the morning we would come back at like 12 at night you would add it uh, you would edit like all night and then uh, when we were eating breakfast, you would take a nap and then we would start the day again. Um, and I don't think people realize that we're actually like on a full day uh, travel with a lot of things in our schedule and we don't like we get tired too. So when you film, it's not like you're asking, hey, is it OK to film? You just film because it's like the most like natural thing for you to film is your work as well. And it's not work for us. We're on vacation. And we just like, I feel like I don't think about uh, appearing in your videos. I really like by now I'm so used to it. I don't even think about it. Um, so I, it's not like when a camera is on, I'm like, okay, so I should also talk to the camera and talk about this. But um, we all kind of, for me and Seb and Andrew, um, I think we're all just kind of used to like, when you talk to the camera, we can't, we can't like talk to each other. 
um, because it picks up our voices when you talk. Um, so we we just kind of have like it's not like when you film it's not like we sit like that the whole time. We realize okay you're doing like a segment so we have yeah. to just eat our food. Right. Yeah, it's like two minutes. Take... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. then and then yeah yeah like, that's what people don't and understand. Think, yeah. No. It, and I it's think true, you yeah. said this once. You said like people don't understand that it's not um it's not a presentation it's a representation. Um, right, I'm the I'm one doing like, the prison. Yeah, I'm the one doing the You're the, the one presenting. doing it. Right. We're just hanging out. Like we happen to yeah. be your friends. Right, and then sometimes uh, I'll ask specific questions. But yeah, exactly. It, that's what people we'll don't talk. understand. Yeah, people think that it's like we're traveling for the video, right? No, you right. guys are just on vacation. You guys are just traveling. I'm the one traveling for the video, right? Exactly. <laughs> I'm our, the one who has to make the video. To be a YouTuber as well. Right. And, so yeah, it's a different dynamic, uh, you know, and it's something that you rarely see. I think because most of the time you know, one or two people travel and they engage with the camera, they talk to it. But we were kind of in our own world and the, mm. the, the camera was just like another person really who didn't talk back. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And and but, also like we would film sometimes for 12 or I mean, we would be away for 12 hours or out doing something for 12 hours and then you'd film parts of the day. And like if we'd have to be like, OK, guys, it's now and we would have to talk every time. I think it would be really disturbing because I mean, we're not we're not actors. I remember actually meeting one of your uh, viewers once and uh, we met him. It, that was just me and Seb and Andrew in Saigon. And we met him and he was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm meeting the crew of Kyle Lay dot net. We're not a crew. <laughs> we're not like hired by Kyle. We're just, we're just hanging out. He just happens to film us and stuff. David, like that, right? But... This, this is David. David Fan. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I met him a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, he's he's a he's a great guy. He's such a such a huge fan. Yeah, and I don't know? think he meant like a crew crew. It's just like his uh yeah, the way he used that word is like a crew. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we're just friends hanging out and you happen to work with YouTube, so you get to and I mean it's not just like I mean, I never think of it as an annoying thing. I don't think I don't I mean I don't remember feeling annoyed about it but I mean sometimes I was really really tired and you put that footage in anyway uh which comes off like sometimes really like off but I don't mind I mean we get tired too I mean we travel in freaking hot weather and we're like off doing five to six activities in a day so I mean it's not always like it's not what you I mean it's not a representation of the real life when we travel because you like obviously you're the one who creates the video so you get to choose the good stuff right the camera is on for a very short amount of time I mean we have 12 hours in a day you see 10 minutes of that day and you see things that I want to present things that I'm the exactly. editor so I get to pick and choose right so what you see on vlogs in the past it's not reality. It's just a presentation of reality, right? This this was mm. not like a candid camera thing that's that was filming us, right? Mm. But it, it was a pretty crazy time. Like that summer, I think that's what one of the reasons that led me to my burnout was I was just too ambitious, wanting to do a video every single day, not sleeping. We exactly. actually, yeah. during that trip, I thought we were no longer going to be friends because I was going crazy. We don't have to go too much into that, but I was going crazy over the lack of sleep editing the pressures definitely that summer was when i worked the hardest and it probably led to my ultimate burnout and mm. i had no sleep and it was it was a it was tough but you know what i think some of those videos were my best ones i agree and i i mean it's funny you say that because i actually feel like that summer was the best trip ever i mean for me looking back and I am so grateful for uh, all your videos because now I can look back on those memories and I'm not as good as editing as you are. So it's just awesome to have that to look back on. Um, but I feel like actually that trip was so great because we were so lucky. Uh, we were lucky that first of all, for having, for having the opportunity to go all at the same time to Bali and like the whole Asia trip. And then coming back to Vietnam, we met up with uh, Kim and his friends from Norway. We met up with Alyssa from Canada. We met up with Yvonne um, from the States and her husband. And uh, am I missing someone? That was a packed, packed summer. Like that was That was incredible. like everyone. Yeah. yeah and yeah, I'm so yeah. like, I'm so happy I met those people because I still talk to them. 
um, I still talk to them and I'm really like thankful for, uh, for being introduced to them by you. Yeah, I mean, so, that's, I mean, yeah, no, I love that. Like I said, I love introducing my friends to other friends and if they're able to connect, that's great. Mm. You know, my memories will live on when they uh, talk about me. I mean, recently you went to Berlin to meet up with Thing and Dewey. I did. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. That was so great. I mean, yeah, I, it's, it's incredible. I love to... Thing. Yeah, um, it's, it's incredible. And yeah, I I mean, they're so they're so nice. Those people. Yeah, and, I would uh, ask Thing to be on here, but she's too busy. You know, she's uh, running some. Big she is so busy. Company, you know. She's, oh my God, she is so yeah. busy. She's super yeah, I can't even yeah. believe she took time to meet up with me. Yeah, she's an adult yeah. now, you know. <laughs> she uh, is. Actually, that <laughs> summer was when you guys got married, you and Seb. And I was technically the, yeah. the wedding photographer, the videographer, you were, you were and like the planner. The if, you think about it, I, if you think about it, I, I was the wedding planner. If you really think about it, I planned your wedding. Yeah, party. that's if you true. Really I think mean, about are we going to talk about it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I know. I mean, you can tell it from the beginning. Yeah, well, you guys wanted to have a small wedding with basically nobody. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> uh, I remember that I asked one of my friends to come up with a location, Duico. And he said, yeah, just go to this one restaurant and they have a beach. And you guys can just do it right there. I'm like, okay. And then I think I called or I messaged the Airbnb host and I said, do you have a priest? And oh, yeah, by the way, we also need a tour guide. And then he sent one tour guide who would later become the priest, um, yeah. the officiator, I guess. Uh, so I think he didn't quite know what he was getting into either uh, about the whole thing. And I remember we got to the restaurant and immediately the restaurant's like, no, 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 what are you doing? You can't film. What do you, you can't have a wedding, what, you know? And again, this was a makeshift wedding. It was basically like nothing, you know, it was just just us standing out there oh oh who's in it who's who's here oh my gosh who's here i think he just fell asleep oh he's just asleep. oh, oh my god he's, he's, he's so big he's so big he's so big good oh my night, god Kyle. good night Seb. night uh fatherhood who who who, who do you guys think the uh, lucas looks more like seb or nina comment down below <laughs> i'll, I'll, I'll oh put my a picture god. I'll put a picture. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Um, Huge discussion here. Don't worry. Most people won't get this far, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> in, into the video. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it was just basically us standing there, camera on the tripod, and the guy just officiated. Right. That was it. And uh, yeah. You know, but it was a lot of running around, and it was you know, hilarious. Like, we was... filmed. I mean, you filmed the wedding, and I remember like we were because we were doing like a tour. I mean, we weren't. <laughs> We were going to do a wedding, but I i mean, I remember we wanted to keep it short and then still have like half a day to go sightseeing. Um, and then I think we went sightseeing first and then we did the wedding and then we did sightseeing more. Right. But then right, like right. during like the sightseeing at first, we we're like, are you the are you the priest? And he was like, yeah, I'm the priest. And then, oh, OK, well, cool. OK. And then like a few hours later, he'd be like, guys, what's the what's a priest <laughs> <laughs> we've been running around like buying stuff for the wedding like a flower and stuff like that a bouquet and stuff and then he like he didn't realize what the hell we were doing and then he's like guys what's a priest and we were like you you have to i mean you already said yes we have to do a wedding he's like what <laughs> and so we didn't realize how weird he was until the actual wedding was like happening because his english was really bad and he just like improvised like it was hilarious i remember crying from just from crying from laughter yeah uh, no it, it was it was great yeah that that day yeah. was uh was was great i remember that uh we were so underprepared that i know yeah i i gave him a hat that i bought in the streets as a souvenir <laughs> for him to wear you, yeah I that remember. was my hat actually i think i just gave it to him because i don't i don't know where it is now uh and yeah. in the end it worked out well and we had like a quick lunch there yeah it was around lunchtime we had lunch there and that was pretty much it it was uh it was, it was a great time you know and uh and then you guys were officially married and i think 
uh, after Bali, we were in Singapore. This was during the Galang trip as well, right? We went to Galang to yes. to film uh, the refugee camp. Yeah, that's true. We went to Singapore and we went to Malaysia. Malaysia. And, yeah, there was so many. Yeah. There was a lot of drama on that trip, but we don't have to. We don't have to get there. You know, it was just. We're good now. We're good yeah, now. we're good now. But there, I mean, there was. It's not drama that much between you and me. Well, there was a little bit, but we had without... like a tiny fallout. But that's yeah, that's what and... every friendship has. Right, right. That that was. It was just the stress of traveling, the stress of not sleeping, the stress of other people, and you know, it was it was, it was fun. But at other times, it wasn't fun. But it's the past now. And uh, I don't want to get too deep into it, but you know, I did I did have a good time overall, and I think that was like our last official travel together. Like we haven't really traveled anywhere since then. Cause yeah. I think, no, I, I mean you've I been think, visiting us, but right. And I think was I don't think that was the last time I saw you in Vietnam, but maybe it was actually. Maybe that was the last time was, I saw you in Vietnam. Yeah, it yeah. was because you. Yeah. yeah, because I came back in that was in sixteen. And then I came back in 17 when I we did a trip with uh, with Andrew to Sri Lanka and uh, India and then Vietnam and met up with the Canadians as well, Alyssa. Right. I was not um, there during that time. Yeah, I you was, weren't there. Uh, yeah, yes. you moved back to the U.S. Uh, well, I I didn't move I back think? officially right in 2000. Uh, I don't think uh, until I went to grad school. So I was just traveling around. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I, I just right. left Vietnam. I just left Vietnam and I was right. traveling around for like 17 months filming all the Vietnamese from abroad and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. And that and I think when I came to visit you for the first time, you just had come back from Sri Lanka. That's true. Yeah, that's what yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because I remember seeing your photo album of, of Sri Lanka. You know, We never made to. it to, uh, yeah, north of Vietnam together. I think after we left, you guys went to uh, Sapa. Oh, was it? I know Andrew was with you. I don't. Yeah, know my my friends from uh, my friends from from high school, like Lazy Lou. And, oh, okay. And all that. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember. It. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, and I never got to go because we were like convinced I would get diarrhea. So. Right. Right. Oh wow. Yeah, those oh, were whoa, diarrhea. Man. Oh my god. Is is it is it you? It's you. <laughs> What do you mean? I mean, Is I it get me? it. Yeah, I mean, I get it when I go over there from time to time, but usually just it's once or twice and it goes away. Oh my god, I'm like sick for a week, and it's not just diarrhea. I puke. Mm. I puke and I get a fever, and I just, oh my god, it's exhausting. And I even got it on that uh, 2016 trip, where seven and I we went to uh, Dalak, and on the very first day I got. I threw up so bad when we came to the hotel. <sighs> yeah, it was coming out of both I, holes. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah. 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 All over. Yeah. Now, um, now that you're a mother, by the way, Lucas is how many? How many months old is he now? He is fourteen months today. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Fourteen. Is it the seventeenth? Yes. Or 16th. Yes. Sixteenth. Yeah. Seventeenth. Yeah. yeah then right. Right. Wow. Fourteen months. Yeah. So. So now that you're a mother and eventually Vietnam is going to open up, do you still see yourself going over there and taking yeah. your son? For sure. Yeah, we wanted to go we wanted to go uh, last summer. But yeah, obviously we couldn't go. I think I mean it's such a shame because I think it would be like the easiest baby to travel with. He is so easy and so uh adaptable to everything. Um I would love to go and and like I can mean I can't show him Vietnam. He doesn't understand a lot. But I would totally go and meet my family and have him have them meet him. Uh, I want him to have like a connection to Vietnam. I want him to have like how uh, the Canadians Alyssa and Yat they have they've been to Vietnam so many times with their kids with their two boys. And um, Ben and Alex are so like they love Vietnam. They they're like not embarrassed to go to Vietnam. They're really proud of their heritage, which uh, I want to I wanted to be able to do the same thing for Lucas. Um, so, yeah, I want to go. Yeah, sure. I think I think Alex is over Vietnam right now. He's got a girlfriend, so uh, Vietnam doesn't exist, no, you know, anymore. I think he's and... single again. Oh, is, no, is he? He doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I, 
I don't yeah, follow I him to too her, much. But... Uh, I keep up with them. Okay, okay. I, I don't follow him on Lisa. social media, yeah. but a couple of months ago, I he, he they they had a group like a family thing, and he, yeah, he had they a did. girlfriend. He he did. I think I think that's over. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I guess uh, Vietnam on the mind. So again. Vietnam is open again. Yes, Vietnam is open again. So, um, but do you think that you'll? I mean, with a baby, it's going to be different, right? You're not going to be able to go out all day. You know, you need rest periods, and that's true. It's not going to be the same, I think, but, um, yeah, it's going to be different, but I mean, I, I, obviously I, I feel worried about having to go on a scooter with him and like, well, you wouldn't, so I wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't, wouldn't. I mean, you wouldn't go put him on a scooter. No, I've seen like so many babies on their scooters and like sure, even sure, sure. in the caps, you don't even wear a seatbelt. You can't even, you can't even get your seatbelt because it's yeah. not even like. It's in the back of the car. Right, right. Yeah, I, I hate wearing seatbelts over here. I just, I've gotten so yeah. used to it in Vietnam, really. And I um, never wear it in Vietnam either, but I mean. Yeah. Um. So when do you think it's realistic that you can go over there? It's so hard to say. I mean, I I don't want to, I don't think it's going to be this year. I don't think, uh, I don't think Denmark is going to let us go uh, this summer. They're saying like um, the last people to get the vaccine in Denmark would be around I think they said June which is which is like then it would probably be um possible but I just think ugh, it's always like aren't vaccines always late uh, I mean it's I don't pretty know like, it's, I don't it's late get in California up. it's late in California yeah. right now but uh if but let's say you do get it in June would you consider going in July or August if Vietnam opens yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That that depends on how the world looks cuz I'm like I don't know. It's hard to say. What about yeah. you? Like I I don't know. Uh, I it's will so hard go, to predict the future. I will go if the right opportunity allows me for it. Right. So if, you wouldn't just say, go to go. Oh, no, I, there has to be a reason for me to go. Like I'm, I don't need to fly over there and eat pho in the streets by myself. Like if a bunch of friends are going, if there's a business opportunity, if there's work, mm. if there's a project, if there's something, yeah, right, yeah. then yeah, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't mind going if the scheduling is right. But it's all about scheduling. But one thing mm. I definitely want to do though is I would like to take people um, on a tour to like Galang or yeah. uh, Bidong or all these other refugee camps, right? People who might not n- know how to go by themselves or maybe I'll right. even take a, a small group of people uh, and mm-hmm. travel throughout Vietnam, you know? And yeah. I don't know when that will be, but, you know, and I should have done it a long time ago. I know everybody is like, hey, you should be a tour guide, take people to Vietnam. I know, like, yeah. but I should have paid you. Yeah, I know, right? My life was different back then and now it's different, but I'm saying that's what I would like to do for people who might not be able to get a chance to see Galang again, because even right mm. now, I think it's pretty much shut down and turned into like a COVID hospital uh, area or something like that now. Right. So, so it's not what it well, used even to be. When, yeah. Even when we went to Galang, that was pretty hard to find. And I think we asked like a lot of people, where are we? Where's the refugee camp? And we just stumbled across this random guy who happened to, uh, to who happened to grow up, in the camp yeah that was very uh, random like i mean that was like this much, random indonesian was, guy that was great fortune you know because we were lost we didn't know what to do our driver we had no lost. idea we, our driver had no exactly. idea our I driver had zero like, idea i think you're like trolling people just like hey sin chow sin chow and then this guy drives by sin chow on oh that's and, right that's right yeah 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 yeah. because i was like hey it's a vietnamese area right yeah, sin chow to and random he people spoke vietnamese and he, yeah and, and this guy responded back and i was like what what the jackpot, hell? <laughs> jackpot. And, you know, Abu Galang, Abu Galang. Uh, quite a few people yeah. reached out to me asking for his information after watching mm-hmm. that video. So people recognize him, right? That mm-hmm. that Galang video has done very well. It's shared all over Kevin. the... Yeah, it's shared all over oh, the wow. Vietnamese uh, refugee uh, camp uh, Facebook groups and stuff like that. So I'm very oh, wow. proud of that. I'm, I'm proud that's that... Cool. Actually, that's one of my, my proudest accomplishments that I'm able to help Vietnamese... Uh, former refugees who don't have a chance to go back to Bidong or uh, Galang to see what it was like at that time or to show their family, hey, you know, look, this is the island that I stayed at. This is the beach that yeah. I swam at, right? So mm. I, 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 that's good for them, but it's also good for me because having been there, I can connect 
way more with older Vietnamese people who I meet here. You know, if I meet mm. over here and they say, yeah, you know, I did Yik Bing and I'm like, okay, which camp? And then we start talking about it and they're very mm. surprised that I've been there. They're like, what? How how did yeah. you get there? And, you know, it's easy to kind of break the ice with a lot of older Vietnamese people like that. And I really enjoy talking to them about the boat refugee camp experience a lot. Mm. So yeah. it's eventually going to go away. I mean, Bidong and Galang, it, it will go away. They will tear it down and build something else. It's just a matter of time. So now is the time to go and perhaps maybe going with me. But mm. we'll see. Feel free to reach out for, uh, to me, guys, if anybody's interested in that in the future. Obviously not now. But mm. I would love one day, and I'm sure everybody, all the viewers would love it as well, if we could all go back to Vietnam in a big group again and go to places that far flung that we haven't been. There's still many places that I haven't gone to. I mean, you and I, we haven't really experienced the deep Mekong Delta or the far north or even mm. Hanoi together, right? There's oh my so God, many there's other so much. places. And like yeah. you said, Vietnam is ever changing. So there's constantly something new. I'd love to go to like the uh, western, northwestern area, you know, of Vietnam. Mm. Um, it, traveling there is quite difficult, but the views and just being there, it's quite rewarding. Um, mm. I really miss it, you know, yeah. but more importantly, I miss the people, the people make the place. It's not just Vietnam, but it was my experiences yeah. and my time in those moments with friends like you, Nina and Seb and everyone else that we kind of cross paths with for better or for worse, but mostly for mm. better. Um, and, and I'm, I'm happy that I was able to introduce you to people who you could consider friends. And this is the Kaolei.net net. <laughs> The network. <laughs> the network. Right. The network, yeah. So what are what are some things that people don't know about you? I don't know what people know about me. What don't well, they know? Well, they, they, I, they, you they, tell they me. Don't know, they don't know many things. Like, okay, so so what, what was your most recent job? Uh, you actually taught me this word. Branch manager. Uh-huh. Uh, at um, this company. I don't want to say its name. Uh, what but they it, make? uh, they make, um, they make chocolate. I mean, actually don't even make the chocolate. They <laughs> buy chocolate from Africa and other, uh, raw materials. And then they bring it to Denmark where we make it, um, into all these chocolatey things and ice cream and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, um, some of the profit goes back. It's reinvested in the projects in Africa. So it's not like an NGO. It's a, a social economic, um, business. Yeah, uh, um, I I even made a promo video for for their Facebook uh, you thing, did. and yeah. I think that was the most viewed video that you guys ever had. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you um, had a freaking drone outside. Yeah. Yeah, I know that was uh that that was highly illegal, by the way. Uh, you're not. I don't think you're allowed to fly drones in. Uh, I don't think so either. Know. Yeah, and I yeah. did it anyways, but it's okay. It was worth it for the <laughs> video. Now, why why do you think I like Denmark so much? Ah. <sighs> I remember like when you when you used to say you wanted to visit Denmark, I would always say, oh, it's nothing to see. It's just boring. It's just like a flat land. Um, I didn't realize how like different our cultures are. Um, I think you're drawn to the culture. I think you're drawn to the people. It's so it's so like opposite from what I've heard. It's so opposite from Americans. Um, just the whole not just Denmark, but just like the whole Scandinavian um, mindset and the way of living. It's so different. Um, I don't know why you're that drawn to it. I don't know. Aren't you like just drawn to what you're like to the opposite of what you're, what you know? I don't know. Like, I don't think Denmark is that great, but you, you make it sound like it's awesome. Well, maybe I'd feel the same about the U S once I go. Cause I've never well, I been. Mean, I mean, the grass is always greener on the other side, more or less, but what it is, I think is, it's that simple feeling of a of a more basic lifestyle where like you said family you go to work you come home you can walk you can use public transportation and i don't feel like it's so competitive as it is here in southern california mm. i feel like life will go by a little bit slower and yes it might be a little bit more boring but mm. it comes down to the people and I always have enjoyed how Danish people, how open they were to making me feel. Is it maybe Vietnamese, Danish, or Seb's family? 
or just other people I've stumbled upon throughout the years. And I just think that it's just something so, so simple. And I was mm. just, or am looking for a little bit of a simpler life, but I know that once I have it, I might be bored as hell because, right. uh, you know, I mean, in Aarhus, I mean, what is there to do besides feeding the deer and, you know, going to Aros and looking at all the museum stuff. And it's not know. about the places. It's about the people. That's my goal. I would like to live in Denmark for a little bit, uh, mm. you know, six months to a year. And, uh, you know, I should start applying for I should start applying to Lego and, uh, and, and seeing seeing what happens. I just never got around to it. Uh, I've talked about this for a long time, but I don't know. Dewey wants yeah, me to move to here. Berlin because rent is so cheap, you know, but it's not that simple, guys. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to move to Vietnam, but you got to have a plan, right? Even Vietnam now, you got to have a plan. I can't just move over there. What am I going to do again? Right. And it has to be something fulfilling mm. and different. I can't just go back right. to becoming a teacher. I liked it at that time, I understand but that. I'm, I'm over that. You know, I need to do something that challenges me or right for a future, I really, you know, I'm... for a better future. I totally agree. Yeah. Life is too short to do anything that sucks. Yeah, but I'll go over there as soon as I can. But I think hopefully we'll be able to spend more time in Vietnam. I'm going to let you go. Is there anything else you'd like to say to your uh, your fans? Because uh, you have fans, you know, whether you admit it or not. I mean, can can we actually can we briefly mention all the times you've been recognized in Denmark? Oh, my God. You're oh like a similar celebrity over there. Oh, my God. Uh, Don't talk about it. You get recognized you know, I, I... at your local supermarket. Right. You you went in for a job interview and these women recognize you in this factory. Right. And many other times where people, I'm sure, didn't say anything to you. But it's not like I remember, like, we always used to tease you so much. Like, ooh, you got 10,000 subscribers. Ooh. And we wouldn't, like, let it get to your head. But I remember, like, uh, the summer of 16 when you did the blogging and your channel just grew so much. I remember, like, we got recognized freaking everywhere, everywhere in Saigon. And, like, yeah, we would just get recognized. Even just, like, me and Seb, when we were out without you, we would still get recognized. Um, and, I, I mean, I even had to admit, like, okay, then, okay, yeah, I guess I guess you're famous then. I mean, I, I guess. But you okay, are. It's you are weird. famous. You are famous. No, I'm not. But you are. And then... I could deal with that, but then, like, coming back to Denmark, which is, like, my other world, because that's, like, Vietnam is a world. It's not a country. It's, like, our different world. We have a different life there. Um, coming back to Denmark and then getting recognized here, I just felt like, oh, my God, this is so weird. Like, this is freaking weird. Uh, I I had a harder time dealing with that. You don't like it. Vietnam. You don't like it that much. You don't like it. You're you're, you're a private yeah. person, like you said. I am. <laughs> I mean, it's not, I really. I mean, it's so nice that people want to, like they like, they want to say hi and stuff. I'm not like, against that at all. It's just it's weird for me because, like we said, um, I don't participate. Like I don't feel like I'm like in your channel i'm i'm in your channel but i'm not like participating sure or sure, like sure. doing anything i'm not like do like if you ask me something i would reply and i'm there yeah, but right. it's not you're like not it's my host, channel yeah. right right you're i know not the i'm host, not the host yeah, yeah. yeah exactly so for me yeah it's kind of weird but i'm i mean i think it's great that you have it, i mean we have this community and i'm guessing that people watch your channel because they can connect somehow and and feel like I don't know, like we have some similarities, so that's great. But uh, it's always like, like imagine having like never met a person and they just come up and say, hi, Nina, I watch you. Like, how do you reply to that? I mean, <laughs> if I get 10 minutes to think about it, I can, oh, okay, that's actually really nice. You watch, uh, you like watching Kyle's uh, videos and then you're like so nice coming up to me and saying hi, but then in the moment, it's super awkward. Yeah, like Super that time, awkward. like that time at the grocery store where the the girl who recognized you didn't recognize Seb, right? That was that was <laughs> that was that was uh that was funny. Yeah, he yeah. was like air. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. But uh, yeah. yeah, so you're famous. You just have to you just gonna have to deal with it. You know, you're um, you're you're the most famous Vietnamese Danish girl. 
Yeah, there's yeah. nobody else. No, there is. It's true. Nah, it's we true. don't know that there could be like a YouTuber somewhere or an no. Instagrammer. We don't know. I don't we know haven't that. checked up on it. Okay, well, I don't know. And most people don't know. If they think about Denmark, they think, they think about Nina. Isn't that amazing? Mm. You ever imagine that as a rough rebel in Ranas growing I up? Really like don't. one day no, that no. you would know all these people all over the world? I think, I mean, they know me. I don't know them. But, well, I mean, <laughs> but let me just, I mean, I'm not, I want to be friends with people because like even Claggy was a fan, Yui was a fan. So it's not like I'm scared of fans. I just, it's just like in the moment. It's yeah. Really you're just not weird. used to it. Yeah. Yeah. You're just not used I'm to not it. I'm not used yeah. to it. I think you're more used to it by now. No, no, no. I've, I've been off the, the grid for a while, you know, like throughout the past few months, I've only been recognized once with a mask on though. That was pretty special. That's, but, yeah, that's yeah, somebody impressive. recognized me with a mask on. Right, that's so true. That was, that was pretty awesome. But um, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm used to it. I'm still very appreciative that people come up to me. I mean, back oh, in, yeah. like, three or four years ago, yeah, I mean, it was more normal because I was posting more content. But now, even to this very day, if people still say hello, I appreciate it because it takes a lot of guts to say hello. It you does. Know, to come and, up to somebody what, like, like that. Exactly, especially in Denmark where people are very, like, um, respectful of uh, like they, like if I met someone a celebrity I would never come up to them and say hi because I would respect their privacy too right, much right 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 and Danish are just a lot more shy and th- there's this there's right like no this no it's true people, it's but... true it's true I remember when the mayor of Aarhus was walking around next to me yeah Seb was like, hey, that's the mayor. I was like, whoa, oh my God. Oh, I, I got to take a picture with him, right? And then everybody was just like nonchalant about it, you know? Like, exactly. The, prim- the prime minister of Norway, you know, walked down the street, you know, and my friend saw her and she was like, wow, okay, that was it. Like, you know, if yeah. I saw, you know, the prime minister of anywhere, I'd be like, whoa. Yeah, so it's a different yeah. mentality. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so um, is there anything you'd like to leave your uh your viewers and your longtime supporters you know would you like to say anything to them this is like your first time really talking directly to them right if you really I know, think about yeah. it i mean i, I have like 10 percent left on my phone um uh, thank you for watching uh it's i don't i mean i actually even like sometimes i read the comments and i do recognize like the same people but i don't remember them that right now like it's always the same people commenting on on the videos that i'm in uh it's always fun to read like but yeah thank you for watching and keep supporting kyle he needs it he needs your love i need don't it, be yeah. too harsh on him and his uh it. especially his love life man he's trying he is trying guys <laughs> so don't be too harsh on him and no, thank you guys no. for <laughs> hey i'm helping you <laughs> nina knows all about my love life one day i'm gonna discuss it but the reason why i don't like to discuss it, it so much long. anymore like, we'd have like a five-hour podcast well yes that and i don't want it to affect the people you know i don't want right. it to affect the other people well don't like, mention names yeah but it's so easy to figure it out if you really think about it right and i don't want the viewers to go and bother those other people and it's happened in the past and that's why i'm mm. keeping a little bit more um you know reservation about that but maybe one day when you know in with time yeah but but yeah. i do i do i i used to have a very long love life but with covid not so much anymore but yeah. yeah good luck with that okay thank you nina and uh hopefully we can get you back soon and maybe we could do like a uh a round table danish discussion you know with me you claggy and Anne sophie and other danish people that i can round up and mm. uh get mm-hmm. together one day that'd be interesting yeah, if, huh? if, if can... people want to watch it yeah we can not? uh yeah we can talk uh about growing up as a uh, vietnamese danes yeah. Okay, cool. Good idea. Yeah, 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 okay. Well, take care for now. Bye. Okay, bye, Nina. Thank you. Good night. Talk, talk for Ma. Night. Oh, you're welcome for yeah. the food. Yes. <laughs>